it going? Alright, so uh, this is a continuation from the last video I did about um, adding 1560Hz switching and a English and Japanese switch to the Mega Drive 2 or the Genesis 2 if that's what you're using. Right, now um, as a continuation of this, um, this is to add colour um, back into the 60Hz picture or 50Hz picture if you are got a Genesis um, for anyone that uses RF composite or S-video. So in the last video um, I showed you basically where to stop um, and I'm just going to give you a quick recap. Um, definitely go back and watch that other video though um, if you haven't already. So basically um, pin 107 on our Sega 315 chip that controls our English and Japanese switches. Um, we need to tap a wire onto that and you can do it either by lifting a leg or soldering to the point that I showed you. Um, and also we need to tap on a wire to jump a through. Um, this is for our 50 or 60 hertz switching. Um, and finally we also need 5 volts and ground coming out of the bottom of our voltage regulator. Right, so that's a recap. Um, now we need to add some more solder points and cut some more traces. And we're also going to have to build a little circuit to fix this up. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into okay, it. Okay, so uh, just looking at our uh, motherboard here. You can see that we've got our video encoder just over here and if you look at these little wee resistors you're going to see one there that's got R61 written just underneath it and that is a point of interest. So what we need to do is on the outside of it, you can see where the shielding marks are here, we just need to add a bit of solder just to one side of it. Now with these, don't put a lot of heat onto them because um, too much heat is going to lift it clean off and then you're going to have some troubles. So we need to lift, uh, so add a little bit of solder to that and then what we need to do is follow the trace down and add a bit of solder to another point and also cut this trace. So I'll just get this moved and we'll get into that. Alright, so if we follow that trace down you'll find it actually comes to a nice shiny little point just in front of the, uh, the voltage regulator. And you can see it just here. So what we need to do is add a little bit of solder to Okay, so now I've got some solder there and what we're going to do basically is find somewhere nice and safe to um, actually sever that trace and the way this is going to work is we're going to feed our, um, well basically we're going to feed the correct clock in um, into R61, that's why we put the solder there and we're going to get the factory clock uh, for our 50 hertz signal from the solder point. Um, and that's why we need to sever this wire. So we'll find a nice safe spot for the trace and we'll get it cut. Alright, so if we follow this trace out, you can see it just runs just down here. And it's it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but um, you'll see it when you're looking at it. And basically what we need to do is just pick somewhere nice and easy and um, basically just cut it. So I'll just very carefully each way. Unfortunately it's very close to um, a couple of other traces so you've just got, really got to take your time on this and just be quite careful. So I'll just very carefully each way up there. Okay, so hopefully you can see the little, uh, little divot I've put into that. It's not so easy to see when you're working with such small things but um, what we need to do, if you want to be sure, is basically um, get your multimeter and just check for continuity between this side of R61 and that point that we just added the solder to. If you've got no continuity, then you've uh, broken the wire, which is exactly what we need to do. So I'm just going to check mine and then we'll carry on. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to um, make a little, um, little board up. Okay, so you're going to need a 4-pin oscillator. Now because I'm working on a Mega Drive, I've got a 3.579545 MHz 4-pin oscillator. And if you're working on a Sega Genesis Model 2, um, instead you're going to need a 4.433 MHz oscillator. Um, what this is going to do is just basically put out the correct frequency so that your television can pick up colour. 
all right? And all I've done is just soldered it onto a little Vero board here. You can see I've basically put a little cut through the center of the board. Um, and all we need to do is add five volts, or a wire that's gonna go, come from five volts, put that into pin two. And you can see, as I've explained before, these oscillators, pin one is indicated by this little square edge here and little dot. So, pin two is a wire that hooks up to our, our five volts. Um, pin three is a wire that uh, goes off to ground. And pin four is, the, um, is where our oscillating speed is going to come out of. And what you can do, and um, this isn't necessary, but it's just good practice, is I've put a 100 nanofarad capacitor going between the five volts and the ground. And this just basically, um, just filtering out any sort of rubbish that might be coming through from your power supply. So it just gives it a bit of a nice, clean signal. Um, it is optional doing this. You, do, you don't really need to. The, the power supplies and the mega drives are actually pretty good. Um, but like I say, it's good practice um, if you want to just add a pin, oh, sorry, a capacitor joining them up. Um, and also, um, if you're having a lot of filtering issues or you're getting a lot of, uh, you, once you've done this, basically if you get a lot of lines interference coming through your picture, um, what you can also do is add a 30 picofarad capacitor um, from pin four and then connect the other end to your, um, to your blue wire, which is gonna be carrying your, uh, your correct frequency. Um, but I haven't done it because to be honest, I found a picture out of it, it was quite fine. All right, so basically, yeah, put this onto the Vero board and uh, get it soldered up, and um, now we'll get into fitting it. All right, so uh, to save a bit of confusion, we're gonna get our language switch out of the way. So if you remember from the last video and from the quick recap I gave in the beginning of this one, um, we have a white wire attached to the Sega 315 chip. It's hooked up to pin 107 and we need a single pole double throw switch, so SPDT, um, if you're doing a Google thing. And um, basically, we need ground going in one side, five volts going in, in the other, and we're gonna take our white wire, and we're just gonna solder that onto uh, the center leg. So we'll just get that attached. Just like that. Okay, so that's done. That's uh, that'll flick between English and Japanese. So that's the easy one done. Now we'll um, go get the more complicated one out of the way. Okay. So looking back at our R61 point here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white wire, and I'm just going to attach that to that point that we added a bit of solder to. Just like that. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is where we added our solder, where the original clock came from, I'm just going to attach a blue wire to that. Just put a little bit of heat on. Sorry about losing focus here for a second, but there we go. Okay, and uh, now I've got our wires attached, we need to put it all together. All right, so the next bit we need is we're gonna need a double pole, double throw switch. Okay, so DPDT, if you're um, searching for one. So as you can see, they've got six contacts here, and basically it's the equivalent of having two switches in one. So this row here is not connected to that row there. So first up, um, what I've done is the Power and ground out of their little oscillator board that we've made, I've joined them up with the power and ground that's coming out of our voltage regulator. And what I'm going to do is basically put 5 volts on one side and I'm just going to add ground to the other side. Okay, so you can see there I've added 5 volts on one side and um, ground on the other. And in our centre, 
we need to attach the blue wire that comes from jumper 3. So this side of the switch is going to control our 50 and 60 hertz. Okay, so that's that side of the switch complete. Now we need to sort out the other side. Alright, so we attached a white wire to one side of R61. And that wire there is where our, uh, our clock goes in. So we need to attach that to the centre of the other side of our switch. And on the two remaining sides is where we attach the original clock that we got and on the other side we attach the blue wire from our little circuit board. Alright, so what we're going to do is attach the blue wire that comes from our little Vero board to one side of the switch and the blue wire that's carrying our original clock we're going to attach that to the other side. Okay, so now it's ready to give it a test. Okay, and um, just just to clarify as well, if you're using a um, rocker switch like this, um, pretty much your 60 hertz or whatever your new clock speed is, if you're doing this as a Genesis, this would be a 50 hertz clock, um, needs to go directly opposite where the five volts is going in. Okay, and your factory speed goes directly opposite the um, ground wire. Now, if you get it the wrong way around, all that's going to happen is your picture is going to be black and white um, when you switch it. So it's it's not a biggie if you muck that bit of it up. But what I'll probably end up doing is I'll, um, as I've started doing lately anyway, is I'll put a little bit of a circuit diagram um, up on my website just so you've got something to go on, a bit of a reference because I sort of realise that sometimes when you're doing these vids things can still seem a little bit unclear so if you've got a bit of a map to follow you should see what to do so all right um yeah enough talk out of me we'll get on to giving this a test all right so we've just got our uh, motherboard sitting here um, i've got my video and everything hooked up i've still got to come back and you know insulate our board now you don't want it sitting inside your mega drive like that um but just to give you a bit of a test here so what we'll do is we'll Turn our machine on. Okay, we'll get the switch a flick. And there you go, back to 50 hertz and 60 hertz. So um, as you can see, full colour, working perfectly. So yeah, um, I hope that's helpful to you guys. I think this particular fix for the Mega Drive 2 anyway hasn't been very well documented in the past. So um, I certainly hope this has helped someone out. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching guys. We'll um, see you again soon.